Do you need errors and emissions, general liability, drone insurance, or even cyber liability coverage? Then let me tell you about our sponsor, Claim Professionals Liability Insurance Company, or CPLIC. Founded 16 years ago by independent adjusters for independent adjusters, CPLIC offers products to give you peace of mind while you help your insureds. Apply now at cplic.net and let them know that Adjuster TV sent you. Welcome to part two of our hover demo and walkthrough. Okay, so last time we showed you how to use the app to take the eight or slightly more photos that the app requires to calculate all the areas and lengths of all of the things. In this video, I'll show you what it looks like when you are notified that your hover job is now ready to view, what you can do with that information, how to request an ESX for Xactimate, and how to import that into an existing claim project. Starting now. You're watching the Property IA Show. Hey, it's Matt here with the Property IA Show on Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe to Adjuster TV here on YouTube. Click on the bell notification so that you never miss a video. When you punch that like button, you're punching bad guys in the kisser. In this video, part two of our Hover demonstration, we're going to take a look at the reports generated by Hover and how you can use them. But before we get into all that, I wanna tell you about our sponsor, the IA firm CCMS and Associates. CCMS dedicates their management team to training and developing a talented adjusting team. That's you and me. As a full service independent insurance adjusting company, CCMS and Associates specializes in every part of the claim service cycle, including day-to-day -day property claims, casualty claims, complex claims, and residential and commercial losses. Strategic process, measured results. CCMS and Associates. CCMS is currently looking for adjusters who are interested in deploying for TWIA or Texas Windstorm Insurance Association events. For more information and to join their roster, send an email to careers at ccmsclaims.com or visit ccmsclaims.com slash work with us. So we've gotten our hover report back for this house. I got a notification on my phone as well as an email with a link. And you can view all this stuff on your phone, but let's pull it up on the computer so that we can take a detailed look at what you get in the full report, the 3D model, and then how to request an ESX. So then I'm gonna log into hover.to. So I've got several houses in here, but this is the one we just did. Justin's house. And it's gonna show you the photos. I took 12 photos in here. And then we're gonna take a look at this button here, which is the measurements button and it's gonna pull up for us the full report. So this is the report that you get from Hover. This is a PDF uh, formatted file. Pretty much every me possible measurement that you want on this house is in this report. And again, I took 12 photos for this, right? So it's got kind of a summary of all the measurements, including the openings um, with your sills lengths, your sides lengths, the total perimeter, uh, siding, uh, including what it would be with different waste factor, with openings and without openings, the roof, all the fascia, freeze board, um, the eaves and the rakes for the fascia, and then so on and so forth. It is a huge amount of data, right? And then of course on the roof, it's saying it's got, it's 31.36 squares right here. So it's basically 31.36 square feet is 31.36 squares. Shows all the ridges and hips, shows all your valleys, shows all the rakes, shows all the eaves, shows all the drip edge on the perimeter and the roof pitches, right? And then it's got a little bit, of, this is a legend that tells you what each one of these things means. So if you're like, well, what's, what's, a, a, what's rake, fascia rake, what does that mean? Right here, right? So then you, it'll show you the purple and the, the yellow, that the purple is the rake fascia, and the yellow is the eave fascia, right? Or, or where the gutters would go. Inside corners, outside corners right here, vertical trim, level starter, sloped trim. I mean, it's got just about, it's just got everything on here, right? And it, it also shows you what eave fascia is and where the gutters would go right here, as well as what soffit is and what freeze board is. But then we get into kind of like the, the diagram parts of this and we're gonna see that this is the footprint of the house, right? This shows all the measurements of all the areas of the house on all four sides. And then this is the complete measurements, which show the siding areas. So SI is the siding area. And when I go to the, the 3D model, you'll be able to see that 
uh, what exactly that means. So this on this page is the grand total of siting per each elevation. On this page, we've got the total soffit, which is um, all the way around the house, and it shows you uh, the total soffit here, as well as this page, which is starting to show you the siting area. So S SI1 and SI4 are shown here, right? So if you're like, well, you know, the area of siting where the garage door is, what's that, right? So SI1, so we can scoot up to this summary of siting. SI1 is 144 square feet, right? SI4 is 140 square feet, which was here, right? And then it shows you the openings. And of course, it's, it's taking into consideration the opening um, when it calculates that 144 square feet on that. And then here's another angle of that same area, which shows the, the other side. So you've got, you see, be able, you're able to see SI1, SI2, SI4, and SI6 and, and be able to, to reference what those total measurements are. So if you're like, well, I need, just need to know what this area is, then you can scroll back up to SI2, find SI2, it's 206 square feet right here and so on and so forth. And, and again, I mean, literally every single possible thing on this whole house has a measurement that you can reference if you need to put it into your estimate. So you wanna know what the trim is on this window or what the, the size of this window is? Window number five, right? And this is the back side of the house, which shows all the windows, all the trim, all the fascia, um, all these siding areas. It generated this information from 12 photos, which personally I think is staggeringly amazing. And here's the left side from sort of the a straight on view with that, that people door there. And then this is a little kitchen window. And then here are the complete measurements. And you can find this report linked in the description below. All right, so let's scroll down. Let's take a look at the roof. This generates a complete diagram of the roof and all of the, this is all the, the lengths on the roof. So you've got your rafters, right? It's showing the valleys. It's showing the eave edges all the way around. I mean, this is, this is worth, to me, it's worth its weight in gold because a lot of times getting these little measurements, all this stuff here can take a lot of extra time. And you, you know, the more minutes, we always say the more minutes that you save doing, you know, writing your estimate or, or working on stuff, doing anything, it means that you can close more claims during the day, right? So then we have our facets. These are the roof facets. So our roof facet four is 804 square feet. So this is this area here. Roof facet two, which is this one here, is 303 square feet. So if you were just gonna replace this front slope only, then you could add those two together, 804 and 303, and you would have your measurement for, that you could put into your estimate. This is the total roof area. And actually, they, it's basically the same thing as this other page, except for they put the, roof, those, the, the grand total square footage right on the facet instead of referencing it as a facet. Right, and that's showing the pitch. So it's showing it's a 612, except for this little front porch, which it shows as a three. And then here's all of your photos, right, that we took. I got all of this information from these photos. I mean, let that blow your mind. And then we've got the 3D model. So let's take a look at the 3D model really quick. I mean, this is super, super cool. So our 3D model, we're gonna click on 3D right here and let it think for a couple of seconds. And then boom, here is our 3D model, right? So yeah, so you can see here that there's some discolored siding, which if we take a look at the photos, we can see right there uh, are showing up in here, right? So it's, it's putting everything in there. So this is pretty neat, I mean, wh but what can you do with this? I mean, what's the point of this, right? So if we click on measure, we can also take a look at the siding segments, right? So it's giving us basically the same information that we got from the uh, report that it generated, including the front door and including things like this little tiny window, right? All the way around the house. And if we only wanted to look at the oak tops of the openings, then it'll break those all out for us and it'll actually show us the grand total of the opening tops. Uh, then if we go to roof segments, then it's gonna give us all of the, the dimensions and measurements of the roof, right? So you got two feet there, eight foot two there. Our valleys, so it's showing me my eaves. So if I need to get gutter measurements, I got the front gutters right there. This is part of the right gutters, right? 
There's some more of the right gutters, eight foot two. I mean, just absolutely amazing. And on the left side, obviously these are different, right? This gutter here and this gutter here are gonna be different, um, which is clearly reflected in the measurements. Um, and then on our surface areas, showing the roof, 31, 36. Um, if you wanted to break this out, like say for example, that they had a, a facade on the front side of the house that was brick, and then they had uh, like wood or vinyl siding on the rest of the house, then you'd be able to click on that and it would break it out. So, right, so let's see, gray concrete. So it's even breaking out like the, the foundation part at the bottom and it gives you that square footage. So you don't even have to, even have to like, you know, if, if you wanted to replace the brick um, and not the, the vinyl siding, then you could, if, you, if this had brick on the front, then you could select probably white brick or red brick or whatever it is on the front and it would show you that grand total of those measurements. Absolutely amazing. And then of course here it has all of your openings, right? So it's gonna, it's gonna show you window to window, what's what? Window one, door, right? Front door is door two, the people door on the garage. And of course you have the overhead door, which is door four. Pretty slick, huh? And then of course, if, you know, if you're using this on your home personally, then you can go to design and say you wanted to have, you know, you and your spouse wanted to take a look at different kinds of siding. You could go in and buy brand. So we'll just pick Gentech, this siding. Then you can sit there and you can be like, oh, that looks pretty cool on the house. Well, then we're gonna have to look at the doors and everything. So, I mean, this, this hover is pretty amazing and pretty versatile piece of software, but this is everything that you can do with a 3D model, which I think is quite a lot. And then if you wanna bring in the ESX, you need to request it, and here's how you do that. So we're gonna go back into the hover window, and we're gonna to go to export. Click once on that, and then you can have stuff sent out to you in different file formats. For most of us as adjusters, what we're gonna probably want is the ESX right here. So I click once on that, I'm gonna hit request, and then it's going to tell me that I will get the, the requested files shortly, and I'm gonna say I got it, and then a couple of minutes later, I'm gonna look at my email, and there it is, right? And then I'm gonna hit download, and it'll download that file. So let's drop that ESX into an Xactimate project that we've got set up. And remember, you can do a copy from project operation to bring the sketch in from the ESX that Hover sent us, but chances are we've already, got, we've already done some work in our estimate. So the simplest thing and the safest thing is just to copy and paste from the file that Hover sent us into our working project. Okay, after we've requested the Hover uh, ESX for this particular house, um, you get an email or it may download directly into your browser and then you will go into your downloads folder. And I'm just gonna click and drag this thing right onto my projects pane and exact and exact in x1 and here it is so when i open this up <clears throat> of course i ask for a price list i'm going to go straight into the estimate and then into the sketch and here is the sketch that was generated I'm going to select this whole thing, right click, copy or control C, and then I can go ahead and quit out of this thing. I'll save and exit. And then I'm gonna go into my project that I want to put this in, which will be this one. So then I go into sketch and I'm going to right click again and paste or control V and it'll let me, before it'll, Commit it anywhere, it'll let me move it around a little bit, so then I'll just kind of pop it down. And there you go. Uh, what I'll do next, real quick, is I'm going to put some annotations in there. So I want to know which side the front is. Front's always going to be down on my estimates. Um, a little shortcut for you, Alt-O. It hits the OK button, so that's a keyboard shortcut, so you don't have to mouse around to it. I'm gonna put an arrow in here. This is north, which right here, north, Alt-O. 
And then I'm going to put one more arrow in to show the storm direction. And I'm going to put in storm direction, alt, O. So there you go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the house, the sketch here. And then I'm going to hit control M to bring up my macros. And this had a 30 year shingle on. I want to go ahead and replace it. So I'm going to select 300. This is the, this is the macro I've created for 30 year laminate shingle. So double click on that. And then I'm going to see everything I put in there. And it's calculated everything out based on the sketch. So the SQ means square, right? So the, the replace price uh, and the replace uh, line item here has square times 1.15, which is 15% waste. We're going to call it 10% waste. Tear off is actual squares, roofing felt, drip edge, rake plus eave. Uh, drip edge, gutter rape, and rake plus eave. And I'm going to go in here. I would go in here, you know, if I was doing this estimate for real, I would take, go in here and just selectively delete these things. It's not steep. There weren't any rain diverters on it. Uh, I don't believe there was a chimney. Definitely no lightning protection or a cupola. Um, and this is a big uh, generic macro that if I was working on site and nobody had, just typically had those things, I probably would delete them out of that macro just so I wouldn't have to always be deleting them. Um, you know, we'll get rid of this vent. There wasn't continuous ridge vent. You know, so you basically just go through, we'll say there's no ice and water and it was just regular drip edge and we had plastic vents and then I'm just gonna hit delete and that deletes those line items out of there, right? And then I go over to my estimate items and there is my estimate for this roof, right? And then if I wanna take a look at this, I can go to documents, I can go to reports and then I'm gonna take a look at I always look at this this one, the final draft with slash without removal depreciation. Um, and then I probably leave these recaps off. I don't think that they're necessarily, unless you're required to have those in there, I don't think that they're really add anything to or enhance the information that's in the estimate. So then I hit preview. And here is my estimate. It includes the sketch. It's got all these things in here. I didn't put any depreciation into it. Um, and then of course, grand total here minus your deductible. Now, theoretically, you could go to, if you didn't have anything in this estimate, under your estimate items, if there was no tree in here and you were just doing the roof and you didn't want to have anything, any of the rest of this stuff in here, you could theoretically go to copy from project, find this one, job 2565548, and then you would click replace the scope and hit copy that will delete everything that's your entire grouping, uh, all your line items and everything else, right? So it'll replace the sketch as well. So everything that you've done in your estimate, if you do that after the fact, like say for example, if you've written a siding estimate and a gutter estimate and everything and, and built the whole tree and everything, and then you, you, you get your hover thing and you say, okay, well, I'm gonna do a copy from project and bring it in. It's gonna delete your entire estimate. So don't do that. Okay, now let's talk about how we can incorporate this into an adjuster workflow. First things first, workflow is about time. So when I'm evaluating a tool like this, I'm looking at it to see if it's going to make me not only faster, but also better, right? So file accuracy is something that can suffer if we try to go too fast when scoping or even writing up our claims. My own personal way of running claims is to be in the field from sunup to sundown and I close claims and settle them up with insurers on site whenever I'm allowed to. And for me, this is the best way to have an accurate file, have excellent customer service and really fast cycle times. And all that adds up to me being successful at this work. And all of this is in light of the fact that many adjusters will scope all day and then write claims at night. And it seems, it kind of seems counterintuitive that closing the file on site is faster, 
but I found that for the most part, I will be out in front of most adjusters in the number of closed claims. And that being said, there are absolutely superstars out there who can close way more claims by scoping all day and then writing later and calling the insurer to settle up the next day. Of course, your mileage may vary. The reason I bring this up is because if I close claims on site and I'm only planning on being there for an hour or an hour and a half, then having to wait two hours to get a hover back is gonna present a bit of a problem for me. I will be done before I get the hover, basically. Ironically, if the hover was instant or available within 15 or even 30 minutes, it would seriously speed up my time on site. Much of the time spent scoping is diagramming and measuring, especially on a large or complex or really steep or hard to access roof. It's hard to grab measurements in areas of the roof where you risk your life to send your tape. I can do this by doing claims recon while I'm setting up my schedule. I see a steep and cut up roof and I'm gonna solve that problem by ordering a roof pictometry that will be in my inbox long before I get to the house. However, Hover tells me that the turnaround time from a request to a report in my inbox is getting shorter and shorter as the software learns and improves. So likely only a matter of time before I'll be able to get that before I leave the house. And if I'm doing a large loss fire or some kind of claim that has exterior damage, as well as interior damage where I'll need to be on site for at least a couple of hours, then the very first thing I'm gonna do is get my hover photos so that hopefully by the time I'm wrapping up my scope, my exterior measurements report will be in my inbox and ready for me to use to write my estimate. So for a regular adjuster workflow where the adjuster scopes all day and then writes at night or at an, on a different day, here's how I would use Hover. So I arrive on site, set up your ladder and introduce yourself to the insured and the contractor if there is one, then do a Hover walk around, right? So go around the house and take all your Hover photos and then send that sucker up. And then I'm gonna start my regular scope. Even though that means that an adjuster has to walk around the house twice, if I'm running claims this way, that is scoping all day and then writing at night, I still don't want to multitask. So I want to be focused on taking my hover photos and making sure that I get all the angles correct without being distracted by also having to take photos and scope at the same time, if that makes sense. The time it takes to do a hover walk around is only slightly slower than just walking around the house. And I'm going to do this first again so that I don't forget to do it at the end. The insurer is asking questions, maybe the contractor is chatty. Both are a recipe for missing steps in my workflow. And if I've done my hover first thing, I'm guaranteed to, at the very least, have all the measurements on the outside of the house locked in. Because the measurements are the things that get forgotten and that adjusters are just gonna guess on, <laughs> which is. And when we guess, guess what? Reinspection. By the end of my scoping day, I've got all my rough diagrams, my window measurements, my sighting. I mean, it's all in there. I don't say this about many things in our industry, but hover is a game changer. My only wish is that I can get my hover report and even my roof sketch ESX inside of 30 minutes every single time. I hope this two-part video on Hover has given you some insight into how this app works and really how powerful it is. So be sure to download the app and check out pricing at hover.to. And coming up later this summer, I'll be interviewing the folks at Hover to learn more about their service and how they will be building and improving Hover in the months and years to come. Also, don't forget that we're doing the same thing with Matterport coming up. Question of the day, what do you think? Have you used Hover yet? Do you like it? Do you think it's got promise as an indispensable tool for property field adjusters? Do you realize that this is five questions, not one? Would you like to watch Adjuster TV ad-free and have access to a growing library of extremely detailed scoping videos featuring the biggest names in the independent adjusting world? Check out Adjuster TV Plus Com. Adjuster TV is the premier video resource for the independent adjusting community, and we are committed to bringing you the best, most up-to-date, and entertaining programming to help you learn what adjusting is all about, if it's even right for you, and how to build a rewarding career in claims, a career where you can help people in their time of crisis and earn a great living. For much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, including many more videos, free tutorials and webinars, the best gear and software for claims, and industry news and IA weather reports, head on over to adjustertv.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.